I am absolutely loving the progress that this RC hobby has. Today, we have the availability to get a plane with a 69 inch wingspan that runs on 6S that's balsa and pre-covered. Now, essentially this Seagull model Cessna 182 is classified as a plug and play. Now, I'm not saying that from opinion. If you guys see my unboxing video on the box, they actually have it labeled PNP. So as I go through this video, I'm gonna show you guys how I set it up and I want to hear from you. Do you classify this as a plug and play or an ARF? Now, I will give them the plug and play factor where all the servos are pre-installed with the control linkages, which is nice. But the first sign of ARF is that the horizontal stab needs to be installed, which means we're going to need to take off the elevator and we're going to have to glue on those control surfaces. Now, the first thing that I like to do is pre-fit this. So I advise you guys to do the same if you get this model, just kind of slide it in, make sure everything is gonna go the way it's supposed to go. And this also makes it easy to mark where we need to cut. Now, yes, you heard that right. In order to glue this in, we're gonna need to cut some of that covering off to expose the bare wood. Now, it's always smart to use a Sharpie. I promise you, I searched my house high and low. I don't know what happened to these things. So right now, we're gonna blame the mailman. Kind of random, but I'm gonna say he came here when I wasn't home and he stole all my Sharpie, so I'm using an exacto knife. Keep in mind, when you are using that razor, if you push too hard, you are going to dig into the bolsa. So you wanna go light enough just to be able to lift some of that covering off, and you wanna expose just the wood that is gonna be underneath the fuselage. You don't wanna actually take the covering off more than that, so it's better to do less than more in this situation. Once I had that covering removed, I wanted to dry fit it one more time just to make sure everything was perfect. Now I'm using five minute epoxy. You could use 15 or 30 minute epoxy to give you plenty of working time. Now I only had five minute. Normally in this situation, I probably would have went with 15 minutes. So if you guys have that available, definitely use that because it's gonna give you just that much extra time to micro adjust everything. Now do not forget this metal bar. That that has to go in before you put the elevator on. What that does is it connects the two elevator control surfaces so that they move together. Definitely do not forget that. When applying the epoxy, it's okay to be generous with this. We do want a tight bond. And if you have any excess that's on the elevator itself, it is okay to use some rubbing alcohol to get off what you don't want on that covering. Before that epoxy fully cures, make sure you double check that everything is perfectly even. Moving on, we're gonna to need to install our elevators in the horizontal stab itself. Now my control horn was actually upside down from the factory, not a big deal, and I'm only showing you just in case yours comes this way. I don't want you to think you're the only one. Very simple, it's three screws, you just take them out and flip it around. Now in order to get this installed, you're going to need to thin CA those little nylon hinges in place. So what we're gonna do is install T-pins. Now I got this set off Amazon, I'm sure Legend Hobby has a set available too. I'm using the smallest ones, and what it does is it's gonna stop that little nylon hinge from being pushed too far into the horizontal stab or too far into the control surface itself. Now again, once they're in place, little thin CA on both sides, all three hinges, and we're gonna be ready to install this into the horizontal stab. Now there's one thing that you need to do that I didn't do, which I'll explain how I fixed it at the end, but that little metal bar actually needs to get epoxied into the control surface. So make sure you whip up some more of that five or 15 minute epoxy and layer it on the part that goes into the control surface prior to gluing or CAing those nylon hinges into the horizontal stab. Another thing you're gonna wanna do is install both of them together to make sure that they are perfectly aligned exactly where you need them. And then you're gonna pull out those T-pins. Now, once you get the T-pins out, you're just about ready to CA these things. Now make sure you do top and bottom and move the control surface while you're doing it to make sure it's not sticking and giving you any problems. And we're finally ready to get the vertical stab on. Now I am dry fitting it here. If you guys are thinking this is a lot of work, I promise you the tail section is the bulk of the setup. Now I think they did this probably to keep the price down on shipping. The rudder was connected. I didn't pull hard enough to see if it came out, but it was a good idea to add a little thin CA while I had it out because I didn't want it coming off in flight. And of course, move it around, make sure it's not sticking. Now I'm using five minute epoxy again, and I'm gonna be pretty generous this time because it is a decent sized piece that I have to glue in and it's a main support. So I wanna make sure it does not come out. I'm globbing it in there. Again, if I go too heavy, a little rubbing alcohol will get the excess off before it dries. Not too worried about it. Now on the actual vertical stab itself, I I am adding a little bit of epoxy. Here I'm going very thin because once it's on and I have it centered, you're gonna see I actually add a little bit of thin CA just to keep it straight while that epoxy dries.
These little plastic pieces are ornamental pieces that go on the landing gear as well as the wing struts and they have to be cut out. Now, it's not a big deal if you don't cut it out perfectly straight. I'm just using scissors. The reason behind them not having to be perfect is once you're done cutting it out, you're gonna wanna use a little sandpaper to round those edges and you'll get the shape you need. The hardest part was cutting out the middle. Now, after doing it with a little exacto knife, I advise you guys just to use a small drill bit. It'll probably be way simpler to hollow out the middle but we were able to do it and it did look pretty nice. These do need to get glued on, but first, obviously you need to screw in that landing gear. Now for the landing gear, I'm using red Loctite because I don't plan on ever taking this thing off and I will be flying off grass, so I don't want the vibration causing the landing gear to ever come loose. And to glue the plastic piece, just thin CA, but I'm not doing that till the end. We are ready to get our front landing gear on. Now that servo right there is the rudder servo and there's a control link going to the front that's gonna enable our front wheel to steer. So I need to disconnect that so that I could work on the front of the plane. Now the only issue I had with this entire build was right here. That front landing gear actually didn't fit in that little control arm because the control arm had a bushing and the bushing was too small. Tried a few different things but ultimately there was no way it was gonna work, so I ended up having to drill it out. Super easy fix. This probably took three minutes just because I started super small and worked my way up so that it was still a tight fit. And in five to six minutes total time, I had my landing gear mounted up and we were just about ready to go. And now we're getting to the fun stuff. It's time to install the power system. And by power system, the ESC is already installed. We just need to screw on the motor box. The motor comes pre-fit to a box that is sized exactly for our cowling. So I'm putting the four screws into the firewall, adding a little bit of Loctite. That way, if my propeller ever gets chipped and off balance, I don't have to worry about this motor box coming loose. I'm just gonna tighten it up and we are ready to go. Now we have to connect our motor to our ESC, which is simple. They're not pre-colored, which is fine because if our motor spins backwards, we'll just disconnect two wires and switch them and our motor will go the right way. I do wanna note something about fitting the cowling. If I had my Dremel handy, I probably would have cut this a little bit right here. It would have made getting it on a little easier and make our backing plate of our propeller fit that much closer to the cowling itself. But after about a minute of tinkering with it, I did get it on. This is an initial fitment, so it was a little bit tricky. But all in, we did get it on and it did fit nice. And by nice, I want you to notice the side view. Those lines are perfect. Now, you also want to make sure that the motor is perfectly centered inside the middle of that hole, as well as those lines on the side being perfectly lined up. It's always a good idea to tape the cowling exactly where you want it. That way it doesn't shift when you're drilling holes for your mounting screws. Now, you don't actually have to drill holes, but it makes it that much easier when you're installing the screws. Now, don't forget, it's two screws to each side. Make sure you tape the whole cowling. You do not want this thing shifting because ultimately, to me, this is what makes the plane. If this is off, and kind of just looks funny, your whole plane's gonna look funny. Now that the cowling's on, it's really starting to take shape and we get to put our propeller on. Now this little nose cone has to come off because we need that backing plate. That slides onto the motor shaft. Then we're gonna be able to put the propeller on. Obviously, like any plane, we're gonna have a lock nut. Install that, tighten it up, but make sure not to over tighten this. You want it to be snug, but you don't wanna strip it. Guys, don't forget that. I've seen people over tighten it and their propeller actually fly off. Like most planes, the wing is definitely the easiest to go on. Now, I'm not even installing our receiver yet. I'm just placing this wing on and I'm gonna use these little nylon screws to hold it in place because I need to fit our wing struts. Now, once I turn the plane over, you'll see those little plastic pieces are really what needs to be fitted. Everything's pre-drilled, so it's just a screw that's gonna hold on the wing support. So what I'm gonna do is screw these on and then I'm gonna glue the little plastic pieces in place with some thin CA. Now remember wing gluing, if you get a little bit extra on the wing, not a big deal. Just a little rubbing alcohol and it will clean it up real nice. And finally, we're ready to install our receiver. Now I run Spectrum and I'm using an AR630. I'm not saying this plane needs a gyro, but I plan on flying it in some high wind and I live on Long Island, so it's gonna be nice to have the ability to program up some AS3X if I need it. Now in basic order, you go throttle, aileron, elevator, 
rudder i'm leaving the gear empty and last we're gonna have our flaps now i'll leave all my settings down below if you guys are interested to check it out but i do want to tell you what happened while i was setting up that elevator so let me dig into that now right when you think you're done amateur hour over here so what i did was and it even said what to do in the manual that little connecting rod that i showed you guys earlier in the video is supposed to get five minute or 15 minute epoxied in so right now the way this sits is my left my left elevator will move but the right one doesn't move much that's because it's kind of just moving around on the balsa wood in there so what i have to do which you're not going to have to do because you're going to listen to me and also read the manual i have to cut those little hinges that i put in right i got to clean them sand them down I'm gonna have to pin hinge these now. That way I could take this off and I could epoxy that connecting rod in. Now I'm not gonna bore you guys with me showing you that, just telling you how I messed up and that's something that I have to do because again, me showing you is stupid. You're not gonna make that mistake. So let me get to that and then we're just about done. I gotta install that and still clean up the wires, but our plane is looking good and we are almost ready for the maiden.